Wild lettuce is a common abundant plant that has been traditionally used to treat pain and sleeplessness. I'm going to show you everything that you need to know to harvest wild lettuce and make a potent, shelf-stable, concentrated extract. As the name suggests, wild lettuce is wild, so we will have to forage it in order to get it. Being a pioneer species, it can usually be found in fields and disturbed edges rather than deep in the forest. There are over 50 species in the wild lettuce genus or group. Lactuca varosa, the European variety, is the most well-known, but it is far from the only species with the herbal action that we are after. I've personally used both prickly wild lettuce, Lactuca cereola, and Canadian wild lettuce, Lactuca canadensis, and they work just fine. It would not surprise me that most of the species in this genus can be used nearly interchangeably. If you need help confidently identifying wild lettuce, don't worry, we'll be covering that in detail. If you cut or break a part of the plant, you'll notice that it will exude a white resinous substance. This is called a latex, and it contains some of the important chemicals which have been discovered in the plant, such as lactucan, which is basically inverse caffeine. Because of this, some sites will recommend to try to harvest the sap in isolation by slowly scraping it from the plant. But don't bother with this. Simply harvest the whole plant. After all, this is an herb, not a drug that we're dealing with. The action comes from the whole plant, not a single chemical. I usually harvest just before the plant has flowered. One study showed that this is the optimal time for some of the constituents in wild lettuce that may be responsible for the medicinal effect, but don't worry too much about it. How you prepare it is far more important. Once you've gathered your plants, you can dry them for long-term storage or use them right away fresh. I've done both and they both work fine but I do have a preferred method. Either way, I first strip the leaves off. The stems are typically not worth the difficulty to break down to use in the extraction. If you want to process straight away with fresh material, add the leaves into a blender with enough of a high proof alcohol, 190 proof, so that it will blend smoothly. You can then leave it like this to extract for several hours or even several days. But before we go to the next step, I wanna show you why I actually prefer starting with dry plant material. The initial extraction of alcohol is crucial. I've done experiments extracting the same wild lettuce, one with only water and another one with an initial alcohol extraction followed by water. Lactucan, which we discussed before, is a bitter chemical, so we can use that as an indication of strength. The one extracted with alcohol was intensely bitter, whereas the one with only water was just mild. So don't skip the alcohol. By starting with dry plant material, the alcohol ratio will be higher and you'll get a better extraction with less alcohol used. So how do we dehydrate? My preferred method is using an actual dehydrator. I've tried sun dehydration, but I usually find that it yields a product that is degraded somewhat. A dehydrator is consistent, thorough, and leaves the plant material as green as when I picked it. With the wild lettuce leaves dried, I first use a blender to break them down into smaller pieces. Then I place them into a bowl and I weigh how much I have. Take that weight and add between four to five times that amount in alcohol at a minimum. And then I leave it to extract for at least several hours and up to several days. This is what it looks like after just one night of extracting. Look how it formed this gummy layer on the surface. Isn't that cool? After the extraction and alcohol, I add water until it's roughly double the volume. And then I put it on low heat so that the liquid rides at about 180 degrees Fahrenheit, stirring occasionally for a couple hours. Once that is done, we need to strain out the plant material from the liquid. I like to use a cloth filter to squeeze out as much of the liquid as possible. And sometimes I even use a potato ricer to get those last few drops. Now that we have our base wild lettuce extract, it's time to concentrate. This makes the preparation much stronger and easier to preserve. Again, keeping the temperature below 180 degrees, I simply allow the liquid to slowly evaporate until it's down to about one eighth of the initial volume. You should start to see it become a little bit more viscous and thick. If it gets to the point of having this thicker consistency, you could just pour it into a jar and store in a refrigerator. But I like to go one step further. I'll add a little liquid back to the extract so it can be easily poured and then put everything into a silicone pad and into a dehydrator to evaporate the rest of the water. Look how shiny it is once it's been dehydrated. 
If the moisture has been removed completely, it should be quite easy to peel away. But if some parts are a little bit sticky, all you need to do is place it back in the dehydrator for a longer period of time, and eventually, it'll remove very easily, just like this. This is the most concentrated form of our extract, and let's take a moment to see how awesome that it looks. We started with 200 grams of dried leaves, and this resinous ball, weighing a whole 58 grams, is what we're left with. It's not a bad extraction ratio. In this form, it's extremely shelf stable, but it has one major drawback. It is a pain in the ass to take. So here's what I do to fix that. I add a 40% alcohol like vodka at four times the weight of the extract so that it will dissolve. As a liquid, it is now convenient to take with a dropper while remaining shelf stable. The last and most important step is we have to label our product so that we don't ever misplace it. For dosing, I use about a dropper full, sometimes two, with water in the evening for sleep. This is what that amount looks like in dried herb. Every extract will be a little bit different in strength, depending on your process, so start with a small amount and slowly increase until it produces the effect that you are after. But remember, if you want to start using this wonderful plant, you need to know how to identify it with 100% confidence. And for that, you can watch this video right here. I'll see you there.